This is Grace with Graceful Living. Ever wonder why I don't consume dairy? Well, my friends and I put a skit together and I think you're gonna enjoy it. What are you doing? Oh, oh I just, you know, I gotta drink milk. So I, I mean, milk to be strong. What are you drinking from that? They told me to be strong, you need to drink milk. Why? Gorillas are strong and they don't drink milk from other animals. Oh, but everybody always told me that milk is so important. Look. I'm just trying to drink milk. This is almond milk. Humans are the only species that drink milk from cows. And that milk is meant for the baby cows, not for us. Goats and other animals produce milk for the same reasons humans do, to nourish their offspring. Calves are taken away from their mothers, the cows, when they are just one day old on dairy farms. They are fed substitutes for milk, including awful things like cattle blood, so that their mother's milk can be sold to humans. Ever wonder how these cows keep producing milk? Female cows are artificially inseminated shortly after their first birthday. After they give birth, they lactate for 10 months and then they are inseminated again. Cows have a natural lifespan of about 20 years and can produce milk from eight or nine years, but the stress caused by conditions in factory farms leads to reproductive problems and other diseases that make the cows worthless to the dairy industry by the time they're four or five years old. At that time, they're sent to be slaughtered. The cows spend their whole lives as milk machines, forced to produce four times more than they normally would for their calf. The animal cruelty might not bother you, but a lot of the practices of the dairy industry actually also affect your health. Yeah, but they have to constantly give the cows hormones yeah. to produce more milk. Mm. Plus they get sick, yeah, because all the time producing milk, mm, make like, them sick, and then that pass goes to our milk. Oh. And then it's where the humans got sick. But yeah, there's this pus in the milk, and then, you know, we have to give antibiotics, which causes antibiotic resistance. So it's more about, like, more about the dairy farmers, like, making profits than, than anything else, than, like, yeah. our health yeah. or anything. And it's, like, it's obviously, yeah. it sounds yeah. like If it's they don't the care cows. about their own animals, I mean, they will not care. They care less about us. Mastitis is one of the biggest health problems in the U.S. dairy industry. Most cases are caused by infections by pathogenic bacteria introduced through the opening of the nipple. Very poor cleanliness of the cubicle that the cow lives in increases rates of mastitis. Believe it or not, the FDA Food and Drug Administration allows 750 million pus cells per every liter of milk. It's pretty much inevitable that you will be drinking pus if you are drinking or eating dairy products. Because these cows are always sick and in close crowded conditions, they are constantly given antibiotics. Antibiotics are added to animal feed and drinking water to help them gain weight faster and use less food to gain weight. Approximately 70% of all medically important antibiotics in the United States are sold for use in animals. The use of antibiotics in food animals selects for bacteria resistant to antibiotics used in humans, and these can spread via food to humans and cause human infection and give rise to superbugs which we are experiencing currently. Yeah, which I don't know why people um, are very scared of the soy milk. I often hear from men that do not want to drink soy milk that they are afraid of the hormones in soy. However, milk contains even more hormones that are more similar to human hormones. There are synthetic hormones such as recombinant bovine growth hormone which are commonly used in cows to increase the production of milk, as well as the hormones of a cow that is always lactating. Soy contains a type of plant estrogen or phytoestrogen, 
that is similar in function to human estrogen, but with much weaker effects. There are additional toxins in milk, including dioxin and PCB. As you can see in this page on the EPA website, it states that milk fat is one of the highest sources of dioxin. The majority of dioxin is derived from the industrial chlorination processes, incineration of municipal waste, and production of certain herbicides. Dioxins accumulate in fat, resulting in higher concentrations in the fat of animal and fish products, including milk. So when I was in school, uh, the dairy industry like gave lots of money to the schools to come and tell us that milk gives us strong bones and that it, that it does the body good. Is that, is that like not true? You might be thinking, how will I have strong bones without dairy products? Some people may be drinking milk for the vitamin D. They might have heard that vitamin D is good for your bones. Well, the fortunate thing is that there are plant-based products also fortified with vitamin D. And the best natural source of vitamin D is actually the sunlight. There's been a lot of talk about calcium in dairy helping build strong bones. However, consuming more calcium that is in dairy does not reliably build strong bones. This study is a review of other studies showing calcium intake and their relation to fractures. Theoretically, if calcium intake is preventing osteoporosis, which is therefore preventing fractures, people who consume more calcium should have less fractures. However, they did not find this to be the case. Now I'm going to talk about some other health concerns with dairy. Dairy products are very high in cholesterol and saturated fat. Eating a diet high in saturated fat and cholesterol can cause heart disease and clogged arteries all over your body, including your brain and your extremities. This might seem fairly obvious, but Dietary intake of fat is a risk factor for obesity. Obesity is the primary causal factor in the development of insulin resistance or metabolic syndrome, which I've talked about before. This includes abdominal obesity, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and type 2 diabetes and heart disease. There is also an association between cow's milk exposure and type 1 diabetes. This is an overview of the clinical literature. We found that early cow's milk exposure may be an important determinant of subsequent type 1 diabetes and may increase the risk 1.5 times. Dairy can also be an autoimmune trigger for other diseases. Another thing that dairy can cause is increased risk of acne. Here's a study that found that those who ate dairy were more likely to get acne. Yeah, I just I almost feel like it makes more sense for me not to drink. And wasn't wasn't her plant milk really good? It's delicious. Yeah, it didn't yeah. make you get like diarrhea afterward. You know, seventy-five <laughs> percent of you know Americans are lactose intolerant. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh yes. So most yeah. people just like are lactose intolerant. They just deal with the symptoms all the time. Yeah, diarrhea, bloating, gas. Uh -huh. Another problem is sensitivity to milk. The most common thing is lactose intolerance. When digested, the breakdown products of lactose are two simple sugars, glucose and galactose. Nursing children have active enzymes that break down lactose. However, as we age, many of us lose this capacity, causing bloating, diarrhea, and gas whenever we drink milk products. As you can see from this diagram, Many ethnic groups are intolerant of dairy and lactose. I want to talk a little bit about dairy, IGF-1, and cancer. IGF-1 has been found in the milk of farm animals. IGF-1 is associated with increased cancer risk. This is why dairy seems to increase the risk of breast and prostate cancer. So how does dairy affect our environment? Livestock and their byproducts, they account for actually 51% of all worldwide emissions of greenhouse gases. Wow, that's, wow. that's so terrible. So it's over half, yeah. Well, this is from the EPA in Australia. They list here that dairy farm 
waste and sewage can pollute rivers, creeks, and other waterways. This is from the National Resources Defense Council. They explain here that cows, just like other animals, poop and produce a lot of manure. Animal waste is not treated the same way as human waste in a sewage treatment plant. The sewage is usually spread out on the land, supposedly to apply to the amount of crops to fertilize them. But often there's too much manure and it goes into the waterways as runoff. Oftentimes, there are manure lagoons that are around the site of the dairy farms. This is an article about how dairy farm has fouled the drinking water of people in Wisconsin. This community is suing the dairy farm that has polluted their groundwater. The farm milks more than 4,000 cows a day, producing about 37.5 million gallons of manure and wastewater per year. Livestock also pollute our air. Besides causing a foul smell, manure emits ammonia, which combines with other air pollutants to create tiny solid particles. Humans inhale these particles and they can cause heart and lung disease. Many farmers actually suffer respiratory illnesses because of ammonia-laden dust. People in the surrounding communities also suffer from this. Cow burps and gas produce methane, which has about 30 times the planet warming power of carbon. These emissions add up. I found this on the North Dakota State University Agricultural Extension website. It shows how much water a 1,500-pound lactating cow will consume daily. It ranges anywhere from 18.4 gallons to 35.6 gallons per day. This is just the amount of water that the cows consume, but it doesn't include the water to produce the feed and also for cleaning the facility. It makes so much more sense to me to consume this water yourself than to give it a cow to produce milk when you can just throw a couple of almonds in a Vitamix and make your own milk that is probably healthier for you. Just think about how much water you could save by not consuming dairy or if you gave up cheese, how much carbon dioxide you could prevent from escaping into the atmosphere. Still not convinced? Don't think you can live without cheese? Well, I was like you, and for years I was a vegetarian and did not want to give up dairy. I thought it would be too difficult. But these days, there's so many alternatives. Pistachio milk, mm. coconut milk, almond, cashews. Soy milk. There's all these different reasons why it just it seems like it doesn't actually make sense to drink like dairy from another animal. Yeah, it makes no sense. I almost think I'm not a baby cow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, you're not a baby cow. I. You don't look like a baby cow. I don't feel like a baby cow. You don't cow. sound like a. You baby don't look cow. like a baby goat either. I don't. Yeah, I just don't need it anymore. No. Well, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are a lot of resources online that you can check out that will give you more information. I recommend these websites. Ditch the dairy, milk, it, it does the body, body no good. good. A special thanks to Aloha Animal Sanctuary for letting us film at the sanctuary. Thank you to my other stars of the skit, including Anna, our animal star, and Brian Heithouse, our newly enlightened being, and Rebecca Garcia as herself. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Please go to graceinhawaii.com for more information. We don't need any animal milk. Yeah, she really said that. What kind of milk is that? That one is almond milk. Would you like to try it? You made it yourself? Oh, I made it myself. I would, except for the pandemic and everything. <laughs> Thank you.